Welcome to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people conform to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. But first, thank you for subscribing to the channel and for all those likes. Today we have 4 great stories, so let's get right into them, shall we? The first story is called, don't touch the servers. So this happened to me a few years ago, when people were allowed to roam the city streets without a mask. I'm one of the three co-owners of a local teaching company that also provided tech support. One of our big time clients was an office for whom we had deployed 3 to 4 servers and provided special tech support as they were one of our OG clients. The storage servers that we deployed in the firm were old and had started to wear down and started to get slow. We suggested them to replace them with new, more reliable and faster ones. And the owner, a very douchebag of a dude, decided to wait till the weekends, as they had a very huge and crucial project going on. He didn't want any time wasted, as they were near the deadline. A week or so left. He told us to get the new servers ready to go, so that we could just go ahead and swap the servers and use the remaining time to check for errors, transport the necessary files for ongoing projects from the old servers to the new ones, and all such stuff. Now, the office had an employee who would look after and approve any and all repairs related to the servers. We had to get his approval for any repairs related to the servers, unless we had direct consent from the owner. Around 5 days before the new servers had to be deployed, we went and did our routine checkups on the servers. We do routine checkups on all servers if the owner slash buyer asks us to do so. We found a major issue with the servers that could lead to them crashing hard, like not being able to work again hard. So, as anyone would do, we wanted to resolve the issue. Luckily, it was nothing we hadn't seen. In fact, we predicted that it may occur and would take only an hour's worth of downtime. So we sent an email to the tech guy that contained all the details of the issue and asked for approval for the repairs. He flat out, within seconds, responded with a big no. We sent an email again, asking if he was sure and stuff and gave more details about the issue and how all the servers may crash if the issue wasn't resolved. He, again, responded with a no. So I called the owner and he said to do it as his tech guy said. When I told him that the tech guy said no, he said, then don't do it. I asked that he puts that in writing. He said ok and around 10 minutes later we got an email stating the conversation I had with him. So we left it at that. The next day we get a frantic call from the office. The servers had crashed. They were behind schedule and could not do any work. They said that it was our job to make sure there were no issues in the servers and how we were to pay for their losses. I then calmly tell them that we in fact had told them about the issue and how serious it was and that the servers may not work anymore. And that they had to wait till the weekends for the new servers to be deployed as they were not completed yet. The owner got crazy and said that we hadn't told him about the issue. I just sent him the email chain between us and the tech guy and his own email. He shut up and knew he couldn't do anything. He asked us to hurry with the new servers and hung up. The next weekend we deployed the new servers. The best part is that what would have cost them only an hour of downtime in repairs cost them 4 days of downtime and possibly a lot more money as they were late to finish the project. And the tech guy was probably canned cause I never saw him again or heard from him ever again as I came to a new and awesome employee the next time we went for repairs. The next story is called Ask the Dishwashers. I used to work at this fast food place. The manager never did their job and let it fall on everyone else. For many different reasons I decided to quit. When I turned in my two weeks notice, the manager ripped it up and threw it away. Then they went on about how they were so upset that I decided to leave. They usually took it personally when someone quit. Two weeks later, I'm rocking my last day. The manager scheduled me to close and do the deposit for my last night. Usually there are two cashiers, two runners slash beggars, a dishwasher and at least three people in the kitchen plus a shift leader, me. On my last night, the manager scheduled two cashiers, two runners and the dishwasher. However, they only scheduled one kitchen worker and me. I called to request that online ordering should be turned off, which was normally done when we occasionally had less than 3 kitchen workers. The manager would sometimes just cut it off when they didn't want to do a lot of work that night. However, the manager denied my request because they would get in trouble. I complained that there was no way we could do all online, dine in, to go, call in and third party orders with one kitchen worker and me. The manager told me that if I needed extra help when the orders got too backed up to call the dishwasher up to the lines to help for a minute. Hmm, good idea. I pulled one of the runners into the kitchen to expo and have one of the cashiers rotate between the register and running when the runner needed help. I asked the dishwasher to come up to the line to help at about 6 and we were slammed until closing at 10. 
We had been 30 minutes behind on orders all night, so the dishwasher did not get to do any dishes that night. I go to do the deposit and the dishwasher starts walking towards the three sinks and floor full of dishes. I ask what she is doing and she answers that she is going to do the dishes. I tell her that her shift was over and she could go home. She says that she doesn't want to get in trouble for the dishes. I tell her that the manager said I could call her up when I needed help and that I needed help all night and not to worry about it. If the manager said something to say that I told her not to worry about them. What are they gonna do? Fire me? She leaves. I finish the deposit and leave the three sinks and the floor full of dishes and go home. I never heard a word from the manager about the dishes. I asked the dishwasher about it and she didn't get in trouble for it because it was my call to not do them. For the record, the manager has left things full of dishes multiple times on the nights they closed if someone else was opening the next day. I knew the manager was opening the next day after my last shift, so payback? After trying to make my last shift a disaster out of spite, I made the manager's morning a disaster by having no dishes to open up with. The third story is called Just Do As I Say. Have you ever had a really bad boss but you really needed the job? So you swallow your pride and bide your time and wait for the opportunity to rub it in? A few years ago I had a female boss who does not believe in leading by example since she leaves by 2.30 or 3pm each day but preaches in our weekly meeting about how great her leadership is. Not only does she never give 40 hours a week as the head of the company, I often walk by and see she's doing personal stuff during work hours. As you can imagine, this is a failing business that still pays its bills but has at the helm the most incompetent leadership team who got there via nepotism. I came to the conclusion that each of them is incompetent because of the logic of many individual actions and the sheepish mentality of the collective. Often I would voice my concerns at certain direction of some of the policies or actions being undertaken and the boss would blow up in my face, privately or in front of others. So many times I just wanted to get up and say, that's enough, I quit. But I kept calm and sometime later she would come by again and say we work so great together because we can have disagreements and she can blow up in my face and I don't say anything. Oh, just you wait. A few years go by and a key customer contract was coming due and we were told to bid on a new contract via the RFP process. I was responsible for collecting the data from operations and the boss was supposed to evaluate the data and turn them into a competitive bid rate for the projects. Instead of using historical data as a basis for input into her model, she came up with her own gut feeling inputs for some of the key variables. As the person putting the bid document together, I questioned some of the rates as they seemed unrealistically optimistic. Her response? Just do as I say. At the very least, I wanted to make the bid document look pretty and polished. So I actually spent a lot of time outside of office hours working hard to make sure we got tables that aligned perfectly, everything is spell checked and sounded nice. And the next Monday I showed her the final product. She's like, why did you bother making it even nice looking at all? Look at the customer tender doc they gave us, it's full of mistakes. I can't believe what she said. She also said because I did this without asking her first, basically it was a waste of time, I wasn't going to get time off in lieu. On the last day, before the RFP submission deadline, I final checked the documents and wait sheets. I remember what she said about do as she says, knowing full well we will probably get the contracts for the projects we underbid. So I said nothing more and just sent it. I was there for the big celebration of winning the major contracts. I was also there when reality sinks in that they will be losing money for the next several years. We work in a tight industry where bad news travels fast, so a breach of contract would be the end of the company. I left shortly after. I heard that they really had to downsize the overhead and the ownership stepped in and got rid of most of the top heavy management. The last story is called Cancel Everything. I used to work at a call center for one of the biggest teleproviders in our country. Mobile subscriptions, internet, landlines, all that. The call center I worked at was also only for business clients and not private customers. So it was not unusual for a client to have a lot of mobile subscriptions. One thing to note. I am not sure how changing mobile providers works in other countries, but in my country you have to get the other company you want to transfer to to order the numbers from where you are now to them. You cannot cancel your subscription and then have it transferred. If you cancel your subscription it stops working right away. If you want to transfer after that then you need to order a reopening of the subscription on that phone number for it to be able to be transferred to the other teleprovider. And the reopening is treated as a new order and a new subscription. So it's an ordeal to go through. 
If you have a debt collection case for an invoice with the teller provider you are currently at, you will then no longer be able to get a new subscription with that company until the debt collection is paid in full. I get a call from a customer who had maybe 10 to 15 mobile subscriptions with us, as well as an internet subscription, and apparently they worked with sales. The customer was very angry on the phone. He tells me that they had received a debt collection case from us for an invoice they had not paid, which was true. There was an invoice in our systems that they had not paid, and it had indeed gone to the debt collection. He then told me that he knew about the invoice but had just not bothered to pay it. He then proceeded to berate me for sending them to debt collection and demanded that we cancel it immediately. One other thing to note is that none of the people that worked on the floor of the call center have the authority to cancel debt collection cases. We need to send a case to another department for that. He would not let me send a case, nor would he let me call a supervisor to maybe expedite things. He said that I should cancel it right away or he would cancel all of their subscriptions right the second. Q. Demolishes compliance. Normally, when people threaten to cancel their subscriptions because of reasons, they mean they want to transfer to another provider. And I usually refer them to contact that other provider so they can start the process. This time, however, since the customer was being a jerk, I did not do that. I asked, do you want to cancel your subscription with us immediately? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay then, I will cancel all your subscriptions right this second. Good. Jerk. Then he hung up. I locked the call with every detail that he had said and asked me to do and added an extra line of, if any doubts, just listen to the recording of the call. I got at it and went ahead and cancelled all of the subscriptions this client had with us. All of them, even the internet subscription. After about an hour, one of my coworkers got a very angry call from the client, who was forced to call from another phone, because guess what, their subscription was cancelled. I was done for the day, so I just went home, but my coworker filed me in the next day. The client had yelled and screamed that they were no longer able to call out or receive calls, as well as that their internet was down. My coworker had to read the log I created and informed the client that they had terminated our services, so of course they would not receive any calls, nor make them. They demanded that we open up the subscriptions again so that they could do their work. But again, my coworker had to inform them that it would not be possible, since they had a debt collection case that needed to be paid first. Or else none of the orders they would put in would go through. After more screaming and profanities, my coworker had to end the call. The next day I had the evening shift, but I had saved the client's information to see if anything else had happened. Apparently the debt collection got paid and the subscriptions reopened. They also had ordered a transfer to another provider. I have no idea how much money was lost, but for a sales team to not be able to work for over 24 hours, I can only guess that it was a lot. Also, as a cherry on top of things, they were in a contract period with us. This means that they get a small discount on their subscriptions if they are with us for a set period of time. If they break that contract, they had to pay a fee of over $300 per subscription. That was at least four and a half thousand dollars on top of what they lost in the 24 hours they couldn't do anything. Or because they didn't want to pay a $30 late fee. And with that we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories and today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.